Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's nice, guys. So what's going on, everybody? Mm. It is July the 5th. Hot this morning. Yesterday, it was kind of cool, but it rained all day. Had my little canopy up over the blazer. That helped. Um, that blazer alternator situation didn't get no better, guys. The uh, alternator from Autotech, it's internally regulated. I need externally regulated. If you watch my wife's channel on here, that being loud, you'll see that I had to take the Brand X apart, Brand X alternator apart and clock it because with that dual alt bracket, with that stud coming out like the charging post, it literally sit on top of the mass cylinder. Like the mass cylinder body, it's aluminum, that wasn't gonna work. So I had to clock it, no problem. We put it on, it still works, so it's all good. But uh, another problem is the bracket from down for sound for the dual aux, it, the hood won't shut. It literally hits the bracket. I have a little leeway there. Uh, I can go in and cut the insulation out of the hood. That stuff's like that thick. So I'm hoping that'll be enough to clear. Um, if not, then I'm hoping that some of the support for the hood is there. I can trim that. If not, then I'm gonna have to cut the bracket down some. That bracket was made for that vehicle. It don't want to fit that vehicle for crap. But other than that, guys, let's get into today's video, shall we? I want to talk about line drivers today. And it's because line drivers are getting brought up a lot here recently. So let's talk about what they do do you need one i mean do you who knows but what i do know is let's say back when i get in got in the car radio the big bad boy amplifier i think it was like the biggest on the market was a 500 watt orion that supposedly did 800 watts or a thousand uh they called it the beast that was the amp everybody wanted and like i'm saying that thing you know it, it was like two by 250 huge amp big black amp fan in the middle um and you know it was class ab so Back in them days, you know, I mean, not many people ran that. That thing was ungodly expensive. But, you know, rolling out of that through the 90s, uh, we started getting some bigger amps. But it was really uncommon to have a 1,000-watt amp. But you still had people with these uh, systems that were doing, you know, like 16 or 20 12s and clamshell designs and some even bigger. And... What they wound up doing is uh, you would have so many amplifiers and they were small amplifiers that, you know, if they tried to run one amp per pair of subs, you're still going to wind up with like eight or 10 amps. Now, what you ran into doing that was uh, the head units back then, I mean, when I, you know, started with cassette players, then you move into the early CD players there wasn't really any four volt out or two volt out or whatever they started coming out but they were expensive and even at two volt out being that i think that came out first uh that was like today's head units a lot of them you know they say five volt out but you got to turn sub level all the way up and had the volume pretty much maxed to get that. Well, it was the same back then, maybe even worse. Uh, 
because back then a lot of them didn't even have sub output. They just had front and rear RCAs, if you were lucky. But you're trying to split like a millivolt signal through uh, eight or 10 amps. And that's just sub amps. You know, think about when you get into uh, adding your mids and highs amps and everything. So a line driver really helped a lot back then just to bring your signal up. Were they needed back then? Yeah, because that's why they built them. But, you know, moving into like today where most head units are four volt or five volt or even six volt, um, it ain't really needed as much. You know, kind of like crossovers. Back in the day, we had to have these little crossovers for everything, you know, because head units just didn't come out with a subwoofer crossover on them. They didn't have subwoofer channels. Uh, now, almost all of them do. I've even seen cheap head units now that just have front and rear outputs, and you can literally go into the head unit settings and set the rear outputs to sub only. So we have that now. And amplifiers now, you get any mono block, it's got your subwoofer filtering on it. They didn't back then. So you don't really need a crossover anymore. I don't really see a need for a line driver anymore. Uh, even running four amplifiers, I don't see a need for a line driver. Why? Because most head units have four to five volt output and your gain is literally there to match your R RCA signal. If you're in a situation where you have so many amplifiers in the back of your vehicle that when you turn the volume up, roll the bass knob up, that you can turn the gain knob on the amp all the way up and you're still not clipping, then you've probably run out of RCA signal and you could probably benefit from a line driver. But, you know, with your clean volume on your head unit set, the bass knob all the way up, if you can go to the back and you can turn the gain up and you're nowhere near, or if you're not maxed out, and you get a clip signal, you don't need a line driver. I don't really see where line drivers benefit a whole lot, uh, not in today's car audio game. I mean, you got some amp companies like Tar Amps, they don't even like anything over like a two volt signal. Mine did best around that 1.8. They, they really were happy there, so it is what it is, guys. There's really no need for a line driver. I mean, I, some people say they put them in and gain something. I don't see how, because all you're doing is increasing the RCA input signal and the gain knob, basically, you know, that's used to uh, gain match the amplifier to that RCA input signal. So unless you can turn the gain all the way up fully and you're not clipping at all, that's the only situation you're gonna need more RCA signal. Now, I could be wrong. And if I am, drop a comment down below and let me know I'm wrong, but I, I don't think I am, guys, because, you know, the gain just matches the RCA input signal. And if you have enough signal that you can get the amp to clip without being all the way up, I don't, I don't see it. But I have been seeing just so many people talk about it, you know, like, do it. Do I need a line driver? Is the line driver going to help? You know, they kind of fall in the same category as the old capacitors, which capacitors never really helped anybody, and at least line drivers did. But it's just a, a form of old school audio that I don't see is needed anymore. Like, I've never... In the day I didn't need it, and still today I don't need it, and that is an epicenter. I don't see an epicenter having a good use for anything. It basically just reproduces a 40 hertz tone and old music that didn't have any bass. Uh, 
most of us now we want a hair trick and shake body panels and flop doors and so to me 40 hertz is mid bass uh i would never need an epicenter for anything i i don't want to hear bass that high but i mean some people that still love that old rock and roll and i still love that old rock and roll i'm just not gonna bump it driving through town you know it's like I, i'm not gonna be out cruising ocean boulevard here in myrtle beach playing Freebird. i don't see it happening <laughs> but anyway guys um what are your thoughts on a line driver i did have one back in the day and, and i'm gonna tell you now i had one to put out like 12 volts and it was you know I, I think i had a two volt output jvc head unit i put that line driver in i was running two amps and uh you know i, I cranked the old line driver up and i could not get any louder than what i already was so that was my testing with it i had a really good i had a high-end phoenix gold and back in the day phoenix gold made some good crap but on the meter I didn't gain anything at all because I had already set my amplifiers like really clean to the head unit and adding that line driver and cranking up that RCA voltage all I could really do was go back I had to turn my gains down to match the RCA voltage didn't gain nothing but I hope this video kind of clears some things up on the old line drivers if you've had good luck with them or gained anything drop a comment below and let us know because i'm just giving my personal experience with them and it wasn't good it was kind of like a waste of money guys so let me know what you did we will have the blazer fixed i said i got to send alternator back hopefully they send me the right one i i only prefer externally regulated alternators uh but I got that bracket on there. I just got to go trim it and whatever else to make the hood shut. I mean, the hood is shut, but it just, it's not happy. You can tell it's touching. So it will shut and latch, but it's not happy there and it's not right. And we can't have that. So hopefully next week I'll be back on to the, uh, the Jeep build. There's not a whole lot left to do for me to get it out of Billy's shop. Um, front and back on the enclosure at this point i got everything painted i do got to drill the holes to run some threaded rod that's what i i have always used i've had good luck with it some people are like oh you lose why did you use threaded rod i use threaded rod for my speaker terminals to go through the enclosure it's all good a lot of people do some don't but i gotta get them holes drilled get the threaded rod ran through there and after that, um, I'm just going to start putting the back on, the front on, cut my front port, get that on, and I'm going to take that thing home and start putting equipment in it and building doors. But thank you all for watching my videos. I love to comment from people. It's like, I've been waiting on a video to drop. Sometimes it's rough through the week because I don't have a good subject. Um, or I'll have a good subject and then... I'll be on my way to film and I'll forget what the hell it was. Today I remembered line drivers. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you for the people to subscribe to the YouTube members and Patreon. I'm going to update that. Hopefully I'll have that updated list out with your names on it before this video. So I'm going to try to go to work and get that done. But peace out guys and as always, base on. Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never ran to the no man, I still go Go, go